Welcome to this instructional video on linking an Excel spreadsheet to Autodesk Inventor. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of seamlessly integrating data from an Excel spreadsheet into your Inventor projects. By the end of this video, you'll gain valuable insights into leveraging Excel's powerful data management capabilities with the dynamic environment of Autodesk Inventor. Let's dive in. In order to illustrate how to link that Excel spreadsheet to an Inventor part file, I first created this part. This part is a fairly simple part of maybe a wood panel with some holes in it. Um, it's got you know several different parameters that I'll be able to link to that Excel spreadsheet. On the Manage tab, if I go to the Parameters tool, you'll see that I've got several different parameters here that I've given you names. So I've got panel width instead of Z, D0, panel height instead of D1. It just makes it easier when you're going to do this to have some names to work with. The name doesn't matter, but remember that anytime you're working in Inventor, these parameter names are not only case sensitive, but they don't do, there's no spell check or anything. So you've got to be careful with what you're doing. But notice that, you know, my panel width is set to 12 and my panel height is set to 24. If I were to come in and change these, for example, let's make the panel width 18 and the panel height 30, um, and then choose Done. Notice here that I've changed the size of that panel. It also changed the spacing horizontally and the spacing vertically and the number of holes and so on. Um, and so it's all kind of got a little bit of intelligence built in there. I'm going to go ahead and change it back to 12 and 24 just so that we have something, you know, that common to start with there. If you want to know more about creating these equations and that kind of stuff, I've got another video that you can look at in my uh, in my catalog that shows how to do that. <clears throat> so I'll choose Done, and here we are back to the original set. After you have your part created, you can create your Excel spreadsheet. So looking at this Excel spreadsheet, <clears throat> there's a few things to note here. Number one, the order of columns is important. The first column needs to be the parameter name. The second column needs to be the parameter value. The third column is the units, and the fourth column are comments. Now both the units column and the comments column are optional. You don't have to put those in. If you don't apply a unit, it's going to assume, Inventor will assume that you want to use whatever units are appropriate for the type of part file that you're working with, or assembly file if you're using assembly files. So if I created a part file using metric, it would assume millimeters, but because I created that part file that was on the screen a moment ago with the standard, you know, imperial um, prototype, it's going to assume inches. But I can make sure that it's going to give me the units that I want by specifying inches there. One important thing to note here is for my whole count, I have the panel height divided by 2.54 divided by 2. I have to divide by 2.54 because Inventor's thinking in millimeters. So by converting that or by dividing that panel height by 2.54, I'm converting it to inches. And then by dividing by 2, I'm saying I want my whole count basically to be half of my panel height. So since the panel height here is 24, it's going to be thinking 12. And I put unitless here because the whole count isn't a measurement number. It's not inches or feet or millimeters or even degrees or anything like that. It's just unitless. Um, and then finally, the comments here, they're always optional. You don't ever have to put those in. But again, when you're communicating with people, it's nice to have those in. This row right here, the title row, is also optional. You do not need to put parameter value units and comments. In fact, a lot of people don't. Because when you link your prop or your, your Excel spreadsheet a little bit later, you need to tell Inventor where the actual data starts. In this case, it's going to start in A2, not in A1. If I try to tell it that A1 is where the data starts, it's going to give me an error message. So A2 is where the information actually starts. So now that I've got this Excel spreadsheet done, I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then I'll close it. 
And then what we can do is we can link that Excel spreadsheet to this part file. So in order to do so, again, on the Manage tab, the Parameters tool here, down at the bottom of the dialog box, there's a button that says Link. So I'll choose that Link button here. And it brings up a navigation pane. And I've already navigated to where that file is that I want to link to. And then the other thing that I have to do right down here, and this is very important, is I have to tell it where the data starts. Remember, the start cell is not A1 because that's where my titles are. In this case, it's A2, that row below that. You have two options here as far as link or embed. Link <clears throat> will allow you to use this same Excel spreadsheet with other um, Excel or with other part files or assembly files. If I choose embed, it makes it only for this part file alone. So I'm going to leave it with link here, and then I'll choose open. When I do, you'll see that it creates new parameters down here, and they're all grayed out because AutoCAD is basically, or Inventor is basically saying, hey, these are outside of Inventor. They're in an Excel spreadsheet. So I can't come in here and really modify these here. But what I do need to do now is because I want the Excel spreadsheet to drive the information. I need to come back up here and instead of giving it the information here, I need to say panel underscore width. Okay, so that this name here matches this one down here. And I can do the same thing for this one, panel height. Okay. This one I don't need to change because it's just based on that one. Okay, I'll say my panel thickness here. And then my hole diameter. Got to spell it right. My hole depth is actually okay here because it's that panel thickness divided by two. And then my hole count. So now they're all linked, and I can choose Done. Once I do that, nothing has changed on the screen, with the exception of over here in the History Browser, there's a new node now that says Third Party. If I expand this Third Party node, you'll see that it says, hey, it's linked to an Excel spreadsheet. If I want to change, use that Excel spreadsheet to change the values in this part, I can simply open that Excel spreadsheet by double clicking on it and then I can change my numbers here. So I can say let's change that panel width to 18 and let's change the panel height to 30. I'll choose OK and I'm going to save that. <clears throat> Nothing has changed here but if you look at the top of the screen up here there's a local update that can be created now and I, if I click on that you'll see that it updates it. And so now it's changed based on that Excel spreadsheet to the information. If I want to change it again, I can do the same thing. You just double click on the link. You can make your changes to whatever you want them to be. I'll say in this case, I'll change it back to 12 here and let's make it, uh, let's make it 18 here just for fun. Save those changes. Again, I get, hey, there's an update that can be made, and so now I can change that panel. So it's very simple to create that link from Excel into Inventor, and it can be used for part files, assembly files, anything where you're going to have values and parameters. Thanks for tuning in.